I'm standing here outside Kelly Talton's aquarium and have you ever thought to yourself, what a strange place to put an aquarium? If it wasn't for the sign, you'd miss it completely. Well in truth, this entire area used to be a giant sewage storage tank. By the 1870s, Auckland was undergoing rapid growth and with inadequate infrastructure such as the Lagar Canal, also known as the Queen Street Sewer, Auckland needed a modern solution and fast. By 1908, the Oraki scheme began construction and was officially opened in 1914. It consisted of a 37,000 cubic meter tank, which we're standing on now, and is the current site of Kelly Talton's Aquarium. It was designed to hold the day's sewage until high tide, where it will be discharged out to sea by this, this 380 meter long pipe, some seven meters below the low tide mark. The idea is, the retreating tide will take most of the sewage out to sea. Before the wastewater can enter the storage tank, it must be screened of any solid waste, which took place in the screening building behind me, which is now a popular restaurant. The waste is screened via bucket dredge type, where buckets will pick up the solid waste like an escalator, allowing the liquid to continue through. The solid waste would then be burned in an incinerator, as evidenced by the chimney. At the end of the day, the operator will need to bicycle the length of the tank and reach the valve house, which is now a popular restaurant, to manually open the outfall valve. By 1931, the Auraki outfall was proven inadequate to keep up with the expansion of Auckland City. There was a proposal to turn Browns Island, some two and a half kilometers offshore, into a sewage treatment facility serviced by an underwater sewage pipe. World War II put a halt to those plans, though by 1947 it was concluded that it would ruin the beautiful Waitemata Harbour and a manicured sewage treatment facility was built and finished in September 1980. And that is something you might not know. <laughs>